Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lift your hands up tonight. Let's lift our hands and close our eyes. Just invite the Holy Spirit. He's already here. He's ministering. Let's just focus on Him. He's the reason we're here. The Holy Spirit is the one we need to invite. When you focus on a person, He's not an entity. He's not a cloud. He's a person. There's many people in here tonight. He's another person who's here, but He's very special. Just focus on Him and just right now begin to just tell Him what you need. Is it healing in your body? Is it a healing and a restoration in a relationship? Do you need help in your marriage right now? Are you needing help with one of your children right now? Financial breakthrough. To speak to the Lord right now. You're not speaking to man, you're speaking to God. I'm going to tell you a great secret as you guys are praying. The moment that Jesus becomes more real than your sickness, you will be healed. We focus on our problems, but our problems will dissipate when we focus on the cross. We realize that the cross, listen, already has won the victory. Very important. Everybody look at me right now. We've invited the Holy Spirit now, but I want to tell you something. As believers, you are not fighting for victory. You are fighting from a place of victory. It's huge. It's huge to understand that. When you understand that, you realize that whatever it is that you're going through, it's only a matter of time until it's done. Did you hear what I just said? It's only a matter of time that you're addicted for this long. You're, it's only a matter of time. You're going to get your breakthrough. It's only a matter of time that you're depressed. It could end tonight. If the cross becomes real to you tonight, God, remember, God takes the cross and he rubs it into your circumstances. Remember, we talked about that on Sunday. The healing agent is God the Father takes the cross and he puts it into your problems. He rubs it into your depression and heals it. He rubs it into your sickness because sickness cannot stand the cross. Jesus became all sickness so that you could have all healing. Jesus became all depression so that you could now have joy. That you don't understand why you have joy. Jesus became anxiety so that you could have peace in the midst of situations where everybody else is going crazy. And you don't know why you have peace, but you have peace. Go ahead and be seated tonight in the presence of Jesus. He's here with us. If you were not here on Sunday, uh, I really encourage you to watch that message because this is part two. And I'm literally going to start from where I left off. So we covered four things that the cross does in our lives. I'm not going to review them tonight, so make sure you check that out. Who's from Arrowhead campus? Arrowhead, you around? Well, you might not have to check it out because I'll be with you guys on Sunday, and we'll probably just preach it there. So praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to coming back to Arrowhead. How many of y'all excited about what's happening at Pomona? Come on, right? Man, I can't wait to preach in that building. Holy cow. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. It says these beautiful words. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. If you were here on Sunday, you remember we talked about Paul. And how Paul had just come from the city of Athens in Acts chapter 17. And that he had been trying to minister a certain way on those philosophers' levels. The Bible said he even quoted one of the famous poets. Athens was a huge place with philosophers, the most heady, the most knowledgeable people. And Paul is trying to minister on their level. 
And the Bible says that only a few believed on Jesus. So he travels from Athens into Acts 18 to the port city of Corinth, where he writes this amazing verse. And something happened to him between his boat ride from Athens and when he was in the boat, something was happening, stirring inside of him. Even though he was grateful for the few, he said, there's got to be something, a different approach maybe. Maybe I'm approaching this wrong. Maybe there's something that I'm missing because the message I have is the best message ever. I'm giving something and it's not producing the results I want yet. So the Bible says when he hits Corinth, somewhere between his boat ride from Athens to Corinth, he changed his mind and he said, from this moment on, I determine that the only message, the only focus, the only thing that I am going to allow to come out of my mouth will be Jesus and him crucified. I'm coming back to the main thing. You see, we as Christians can get lost on things that are not the main thing. Pastors can get lost on things that are not the main thing. We read some of those on Sunday. Your church without the cross is a church full of theology, but it's not a church full of character development and actual changing on the inside. It's a church full of programs and clocks but not a church full of the leading of the Holy Ghost. It's a church full of lights and haze and entertainment, but the real true power of God that can heal a crippled boy or take cancer out of a body or destroy the works of the enemy on an addiction are not present because, I, don't get me wrong here, it's all beautiful, we can use it, but Jesus didn't need any of that stuff. Did you know that? Do you know that Jesus went out into the middle of a desert? He didn't have a sound system. He didn't have no microphone with him. Sometimes I think we forget. We get spoiled by what we have. And if we have it, we need to use it. Absolutely, let's use it for the glory of God. However, I just want you to know, if the sound went out right now, if the light started blinking in and out, if we couldn't have the sound and you couldn't hear the amazing riff of the guitarist and we didn't have the greatest things, we would still be able to have church in here tonight. If, if it really depends on the perfect song being played for you to get in the spirit, you've missed it. If it really depends on the worship team having to stir you up, you've missed it. If it really depends on us having to perform in order to do something for you, to get in the right mood, to want to worship God, you don't know the same Jesus I know. You can get in the shower and God can start hitting the place. You can get in the car. How many of y'all been driving before in the spirit of God? Whoa! He starts reminding you of the promises he gave you about your children. You're like, oh! He starts reminding you of the things he's told you before. You see, you'll be washing the dishes. Right? All of a sudden, breathe. Come and breathe on the stones of my heart. Let your fire start. Whoa! Nobody's around you. There ain't no music playing, but there's a song that's been going on in your heart. There's, there's something that's breathing. There's a tempo. You see, Galatians 5 says this. It says, be in step with the Spirit. Keep in step. The word in step means keep in rhythm. You got to keep on the beat. There's a Holy Spirit beat. Did you know that? There's a song that the Holy Ghost goes to. Every single day, you wake up and the beat's already been playing while you've been sleeping. The song's already been playing. You can literally wake up right back on the beat. Every step you're taking, it's in beat. That's why wherever you go, things happen. That's why whenever you speak, you didn't know what you were going to say, but the situation came, you've been in beat. So by the time you get to the situation where you need to know what to say, God fills your mouth with what you need to say because you're in beat. Right? You're walking around, you're like, man, I thought I was just going to Walmart. You're walking to Walmart, breathe, come and breathe on the throne of my, right? 
You go and you're looking, where's the fish at? You know, hey, give me some of that tilapia. Ah, right? Whoa. Like stuff's happening, right? I mean, think about the time where you got baptized in the Holy Ghost for the first time. Think about tongues, right? How many of y'all were just like, you just spoke tongues that night and you never did it again? No, no, no. You were going to Burger King. You're like, give me a double whopper with a shakara basa po po. A little bit of a bacon on the shakara da And give me a double supper. Something new came. You got a heavenly language. You're starting to speak on God's frequency. He literally gave you a language that he could speak on where you're on his level. That's why your mind can't understand it because your mind is dumb. It keeps you away from the things of God. That's why he's like, I'm just going to surpass your mind. I'm going to go ahead and speak to you on a level where I'm going to make sure that every prayer you pray is in the perfect will of God. Every prayer you pray when you speak in the Holy Ghost, you get a perfect answer. And every perfect prayer gets a perfect answer. Have you lost the joy of your salvation? You know, I wasn't going to preach any of this, but I just feel God just pulling me this direction. Have you lost the excitement of being saved? Are you walking around as a boring, broke down, busted person? Are you fun to be around? Are you someone exciting to be around? Or are you just like, you know, man, you know, I'm, I'm making it. You know, I'm surviving. I don't like that. I get around people, I'm like, yo, man, what's going on? I want to feel, feel some energy, some life. Are you a believer? I'm a believer. Do you know we're not going to hell anymore? Did you know that we're not going to hell anymore? Did you know we're going to heaven? Did you know we have eternity with Jesus? Like, how many things could you praise God about right now if you thought about it? If you don't do it, the rocks are going to cry out. I said, if you don't do it, the rocks are going to cry out. I said, if you don't get up and praise God right now, the rocks are going to cry out. If you don't praise him for something he's done, the rocks are going to cry out. I don't know if anybody's got anything to praise God for. I do. I had water inside of my brains and my lungs, y'all. I was blind. I was bound to a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I was supposed to be mentally retarded. I had water inside of my brain. My head was this big when I was born. I grew into my head. I couldn't wear t-shirts, y'all, when I was a baby. My head was too big. I had to wear the sailor outfits and the train outfits and all my pictures. <laughs> when they put in the tubes to help me breathe because I wasn't breathing, they destroyed my vocal cords. I didn't have a voice, y'all, for the first two years of my life. Don't you know it's the devil when he tries to take the very thing that's going to conquer his kingdom? He tries to, you see. Man, you know it's the devil, right? Jesus don't bring no sickness. You know that, right? Let me give you some Bible here. It's all about the cross. Number five. Because we did one through four on Sunday. Only the cross gives you access to the hidden wisdom of God. This is so good. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 12. Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom. But not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world. Or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. In other words, what I'm going to tell you, because it comes from God, you'll never forget. If you just say a bunch of stuff you learned in a book, they'll forget it. But if you speak the very words of God at the right time, in the right season, they'll never forget it. Proverbs said, a word in season is beautiful. A word at the right time. We don't speak as the world speaks, but watch this. We speak as if it's a mystery of God. His plan that was previously hidden. Even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. Who are the rulers of this world? We read about it on Sunday. Who's the ruler of this world? The devil. What do you mean? God owns everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he gave authority to man. Man lost it through Adam. Jesus had to come and get it back. But if you're not a believer, you're still under the ruler of this world. You belong to the devil. Did you know that if you don't belong to God, you belong to the devil? He knows his legal rights. The devil is a legal expert. 
He knows exactly why you're guilty. He knows exactly all the things you've done wrong. And he tries to use it against you your entire life. He's a legal expert. But you've been delivered from the control of this world when you receive Jesus. And now you have a new king who sits on a higher throne. Greater is he that is in me than who? He that's in the... Okay. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, listen, they were so stupid, this scripture says, that they would have not crucified Jesus if they would have known what would have happened. You see, you got to remember, the devil doesn't know your future. Only God knows your future. Let me tell you even something better. The devil cannot read your thoughts. Only God can. Let me tell you something deeper. When Jesus conquered Satan... The Bible said he came to his disciples and he said these words. All authority has been given to me. How much authority? All. How much authority? All. So if it's all, how much is left? Okay. So if God has all the authority, who has none? The devil. However, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, now you and I go. So when he said, go into all the world, I've been given all authority, go. He transferred the authority to us through one word, go. When he said go, he took all the authority he took back from the devil and he gave it to you and me. So this is what the devil needs. Because he doesn't have any actual authority to change anything, he needs your power of agreement for anything to happen. He needs somebody with authority to agree with what he says. Did you know that? Just because the devil said it, doesn't mean it's going to happen. Did you know that? <laughs> Just because the enemy comes and tries to scare you doesn't mean you have to fall for it. Just because he comes and tries to tell you his promises, which are all lies, you have another promise, which is from God, that you can just tell him on the spot. Do you know that you do not fight the enemy with good ideas? You do not fight the enemy with your theology. You do not fight the enemy with your experience. You cannot fight the enemy with how many years you've been saved. He doesn't care. You cannot fight the enemy with what church you go to. How did Jesus fight the enemy? It is, come on, it is, it's written. Okay, so he's saying that since we now have the cross, We've been delivered from his control, and this is what the Bible says. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has even imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Well, is this just talking about heaven? No, 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 no. It's not just talking about heaven. How do I know that? Because, because Romans 5 says that we should reign in this life. So he's saying, I've prepared some things. I've prepared some, not just breakthroughs, but I've prepared things for you to give to the world on this earth before you even see in heaven because I want you to have pieces of heaven here right now. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For the spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. I don't know if anybody wants the secrets of God. Does anybody here want the secrets of God? That makes me excited to know God's secrets. Are you kidding me? I want to know the secrets of God. I want to know what God's thinking about my sister. I want to know what God's thinking about this situation going on right now. I want to know what's going to happen. God will give his secrets. The Bible says, uh, Psalm 25 says that the secret of the Lord is reserved to one type of man and woman. The one who fears him. So the secrets of God, he actually doesn't give to every Christian just because you're saved. He gives it to people who fear him. What does it mean to fear him? It means you have to obey him immediately, not delayed. It means you obey him all the way, not partially. None of this. I know God told us we're supposed to break up, but so what we did was we just said we'll do a two-week break. God says break up, you call it a break. And, and we're not going to text for two weeks. Oh, it's so hard. And we're going to fast the whole two weeks because we know that God will probably do something. You really think that fasting is going to twist God's arm to give you somebody who's toxic for you? 
You think after two weeks of broken up from somebody who's a toxic devil in your life that God's going to give them back to you just because you fasted? You don't fast in order to twist God's arm. You fast so that you can clear your ears out to hear what God's been saying. No one can know a person's thought except a person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thought except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. How many of y'all want to know more of those wonderful things? You know how we got it? We got it through the cross. Without the cross, we would have no access to the wisdom of God. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God is so rich in mercy that he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ. And look at this, seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are now united with Christ. You got to understand what he just said. It's like you're sitting down there and I say, okay, come on up. And you come and you sit up here. You were in one place dealing with certain things. But now he says, I want you to come above all of those things. What does the Bible say? It said that every enemy was made a footstool under Jesus' feet. So you might think, oh man, good job, Jesus. But he invites you up with him to sit next to him in heavenly places. That means that everything that is under Jesus' feet is under your feet. If I'm seated with Christ, do you know where you're seated is the question. Because of the cross, Jesus has taken you from the lowest. The Bible said he translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. He took you from the lowest kingdom to the highest kingdom. There are nine different atmospheres that are in the atmosphere just from earth going into the heavenlies that we know right now. He took you from all of this past the ozone sphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, all of them. He takes you all the way up into the highest kingdom. You were addicted but now God says you're sitting with me you can't let that addiction take hold of you no more that's not what a king does he said you used to be depressed but now you're seated with me don't stay depressed anymore that's not what a king does he you used to be poor but he said now you're sitting with me now I want you to be a giver that can break strongholds over people's lives I want you to make people's dreams come true I want you to do it why because you're seated why are you acting like things are above you why you know what have you ever heard this before you go to somebody and say man how you doing well under the circumstances i guess i'm doing pretty good what are you doing under the circumstances i thought he made you ahead and not the tail i thought he made you above and not beneath above and not beneath if he's seated in heavenly places then what are you doing acting like the devil has any authority in your life why are you giving him a place don't let him speak don't let the devil in your home y'all remember he's a legal expert he knows when he has the right to come in somewhere don't give him a legal right to come in if he tries to come in what do you say man I didn't feel nothing from y'all I said if he tries to come in what do you say but how do you have the right to say get out? Who are you? Why do you have that right? Because where are you seated? Oh, you guys aren't getting it yet. Where are you seated? So remember what we said about the cross on Sunday. Because of the cross, you no longer get what you deserve. You get what Jesus deserves. Oh, man. Because of the cross, you no longer get what you deserve. You are now have access to what Jesus earned and deserves. Does Jesus deserve mercy? Yeah, because of what he did. Do you deserve it? No. But does he? Yes. So guess what? You get to get it. Does Jesus deserve any kind of healing? Absolutely. Do you deserve it? No. But he does, so you get to get it. You see, Jesus did all these things to give you what you don't deserve because he deserves it. And then he says, I'm going to give it to you. And that's good news. Now listen, when you come into Jesus, you're walking through three different kind of lights. It's filmed by the tabernacle. 
The tabernacle we talked about on Sunday all represents Jesus. Let me tell you this quickly, this diagram. As you come into the outer court of the tabernacle, you're coming in to the highest place, which is called the gate. You're standing in, coming into the outer court, and you have natural light, the light of the sun. This right here is called the death of Jesus. But then when you go through the first veil, you walk into the first veil. That is the resurrection of Jesus. And in the first veil, all lights come down, and the only light that you have left is the light of some candlesticks. It was natural light first. You walk through the first veil, death. You come into this place. This is how our lives are. Into the second place called the holy place where there's only candlesticks. There's just the light of these candles. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. So what happens is you're in that place, that holy place, and now you have to depend no longer on the natural light, but now Jesus brings you forth through the cross, through your understanding of the cross, and you begin to depend fully on his word. You begin to see only his word. You literally live not by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And here's the thing. Some people don't even get through the first veil because they're not willing to die to their own will. But some people get to this place and they stop here. But there's a holy of holies. And it says that in the holy of holies, you go through this next veil. And the holies of holies right here is where you are now seated with Christ. It's totally dark. There is no light. The only light that is in the holy of holies, because there's no windows, there's nothing, is supernatural light. It's called the Kabad glory, the weighty glory of God. It started this way. It comes down to his word, and now it's all about Jesus who shows himself to you, because this is the thing. The deeper you get in Jesus, the less distractions you will have. The deeper, the more that you want Jesus, the more distractions Jesus will tell you to put aside. The deeper that you want to go in God, the more he'll take the cross and he'll purify your life. And listen, it won't be bad things that God will ask you to get rid of anymore. Because you already did that. When you got saved, you know, those first few months, that's the time you get rid of all those bad things. You know what he asked you? Things that aren't even bad, they're just not good for you anymore. Things that are not even bad, shows that aren't even bad, he'll just say, turn off the TV during the week. I don't want you to watch it anymore. He'll just say, you know what? Um, I need you to fast every week. What are you talking about? We do the 21-day fast at the beginning of the year. Well, then you read his word and you say that Jesus said, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. Can you imagine only praying once a year? Can you imagine only giving once in your life? What if Jesus only gave once? You needed to give again and again and again and again. Fasting is just important as giving and praying. We fast all the time. We are fasting people. We fast as a lifestyle. It's not just one time a year. We fast because we have to keep our ears clean so that we can hear and discern God's voice. And listen, I love screen fast. It's awesome. But America made screen fast. You got to get rid of some food, y'all. Here's, here's a couple things about fasting just real quick. If you gain weight on a fast, you're not fasting. <laughs> Turn the lights up. If you gain weight on a fast, you ain't fasting. Number two, <laughs> I can't tell you people, they're like, man, I fasted 40 days. Dang. Uh, what kind of a fast were you on, man? Tell me about that. It looks like you gained about 10 pounds. It is not a fast. <laughs> Say you're on a Daniel fast. I see people, they get trays of vegetables, trays of veggies, and then they get corn chips that are raw. And they put the veggies on the corn chips. And then they get the cheese that's not real cheese but vegan cheese. They melt it all over. Or they just live at Chipotle for two weeks. <laughs> that ain't fasting. Somebody say, you got to suffer 
to know that you fasted. If it's enjoyable, it's not a fast. Amen? Okay. Number six, here we go. The cross is the greatest demonstration of God's love and how much God values you. John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. Ephesians 3, 18, let's see what that says. And may you have the power to understand all that God's people should, how wide, how long, how high is God's love. Worship team, please come out. How high, how wide, how deep is God's love? How wide really is God's love? Is it really only the width of this cross? Or does it all the way stretch the cross all the way to the other ends of the earth, all the way to China? Does the cross stretch to the deserts? Does the cross stretch to the highest mountain? Does the love of God in his arms stretch or do they stop at this cross? How high really is God's love? Does it go just here or is it all the way into the heavens? Does it go even through the heavens into the eons of time into the universe? How really low and how deep does this cross go? Does it go deep enough to get an orphan? To save an orphan who has nothing? Does it go deep enough to save a man who's been guilty his whole life? Because of the things he's done? Does it go deep enough for your sin? Did it go into the depth of the hell that you were in and Jesus found you? Does the love of God and the cross go deep enough even to the gates of hell itself? So when people who are 70, 80, 90 years old, even if they didn't serve God their entire life, could say a prayer and Jesus is coming after them even until the last moment of death and he'll snatch them from the gates of hell because the cross, how deep really is the cross? Was it enough to save you? Is it enough to get into the broken relationship that you have right now? Is it enough to help you, to give you the power to forgive? Does God's love help you to forgive yourself? Shame and guilt are going to distract you from your purpose. God's love, through his love, he gave us an incredible tool. It's called forgiveness. He allows us to come. And have a second chance. But he doesn't just do it once. He gives us a second chance again. And again. And again. And again. He gives us a new beginning again. And again. And again. Why? Because only the love of God. Romans 8. 38 through 39. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither height, life, angels, demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Do you know that even if you would not have received him, he still would love you till you die? Do you know that he loved you before you ever said a prayer? He loved you before you ever started serving on a team at this church. He loved you when you were in the midst of your sin. He loved you when you did not care even for yourself. Nothing will separate you from God's love. But please understand, there's a difference between God's love and God's pleasure. You're not in control about how much God loves you. He'll love you no matter what you do. But you are in control with how much he is pleased with you. The love of God is unbroken. It's perfect. Unearned. But fellowship with God, that's based on you. God will not fellowship with you even though he loves you. If you remain in a place that you are not repentant. God gave us the cross. He took every sin, every darkness you could ever have. So you could throw it on the cross. So that now you could be free to love him. His arms were as wide as they could get. Because you know what the cross is? It says, I love you. 
The cross shouts to the world. It shouts to San Bernardino tonight. It shouts to every continent and every country. It shouts all the way to the end of the gutters, all the way to the rivers, all the way to the mountains. The cross is shouting, I love you. I love you. I love you. I understand if you don't know how to receive that kind of love. But God doesn't cause you to understand it. He just wants you to take it. None of us are going to fully understand God's love. Are you kidding me? How could we? How high? How wide? How deep? You're not going to understand why he still loves you after all the things you've done. You're not going to understand, but you've got to receive it. You've got to take the gift tonight. You've got to stop beating yourself up with guilt and shame. You see, if you want to know how much God loves you, you got to know your value. Let me tell you this one thing. Let me show you this picture. You might know this picture. The Mona Lisa. Gavin, what does this have to do with anything? Just wait. You are only as valuable, never forget this, as what someone is willing to pay. Say that again. The value is not determined by anything besides what someone is willing to pay. The value is limitless based on what someone is willing to pay. The Mona Lisa, look at this ugly woman. Listen, literally some artists somewhere, some experts in art, all gathered around together one day. And they came around the Mona Lisa, and you know what they said? This is priceless. That ugly woman is priceless. <laughs> so in other words, you literally cannot buy the Mona Lisa, the real Mona Lisa. No one is able to purchase it because some dudes got together in a room and determined it was priceless. Let's see what God was willing to give for your value. Understand this. Understand what I'm saying. You're only as valuable as what someone is willing to pay for you. What profited a man if he lose, gain the whole world but still lose his soul? Do you know the gross domestic product of the world, literally right now, it's about $2.1 trillion right now, the earth. He's saying you could gain 2.1 trillion and still you would have made a bad transaction because it's not worth your soul. He's saying, I looked at all the birds and I saw the beautiful eagles. I saw all of the greatest things I've ever created. They're flying in the sky. But God's a great businessman and he never makes a bad transaction. So he says, ah. That's not good enough. Then he looked at all the trees, the great sequoias that you can literally drive through. And he said, those are beautiful. I did a pretty good job on those, but not good enough. Then he looked at all of the fish. He looked at all of the animals. He looked at the great mountains. He looked at all of the seas. And he said, ah, it's not good enough. It's not valuable enough. That's not what they're worth to me. What is? Then he looked at his own son. His own son. Let me tell you what this means. You are worth what Jesus is worth to God. You got to understand what I just said. You are worth what Jesus is worth to God. How do I know that? Because the Bible said he esteemed us even higher than its own self, that the darling star of heaven would come down. Because the Father, it said, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Why? Because you were his joy. You were worth it. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that in your life, but you are worth it. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to encourage you or tell you, I don't know how many broken relationships. I'm sorry, darling, if you've been dumped 10 times. I, I don't know. I don't know why relationships don't work out for you. But I want to say this to one man. His name is Jesus. You were worth it. John 3, 16. This is how God loved the world. 
He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. You were worth what Jesus was worth to the Father. It was the only transaction that was good enough. You see, the last thing I want to say tonight as we begin in just a moment to pray is we've been talking about the front of the cross the whole night, what we see when we would look at Jesus. But Jesus also had a back, the back of the cross, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. He bore our griefs and sorrows. He was stricken, struck down, humiliated. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness. The punishment required for our well-being fell upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. You see, the front of the cross, salvation is two parts. It's not just the forgiveness of your sin. It's not just all the things we talked about. There's two sides of the cross, the front of the cross and the back of the cross. The back of the cross is God's stripes. The back of the cross is healing of your sicknesses, diseases, and inner wounds. Your mental state is healed by the cross. You're not going to lose your memory because of healing by the cross. Your sicknesses are healed by the cross. How do I know this? Because Acts 10.38 says, And you know that God anointed Jesus with power. That Jesus went around doing good. And doing what? Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with them. What was he doing? He was doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the How many? All that were. How many? Psalm 103, 2 through 5, what does it say? Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. How many diseases? All. all. And he redeems me from the death and the crowns me with love and mercy. My youth is renewed like the eagle. Some of y'all are going to get some step back tonight. Oh, my God. Matthew 4, 23 through 24, it said that Jesus traveled through all the regions and he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria and people began bringing all who were sick. Watch this. And whatever their sickness and disease and if they were demon possessed, he healed them all. Matthew 9, 35, Jesus tra traveled throughout all the towns, teaching synagogues, announcing the good news, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. Now listen, in just a moment, we're going to pray and lay hands on people who are sick tonight, but this is what I want to do first. If you do not know Jesus tonight, the cross is saying, I love you. We're going to have two altar calls tonight. This is the first one. If you do not know Jesus tonight, the cross is saying, I love you. His arms are open wide. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have peace with God? Do you know that if you died tonight, God forbid, if something happened, that you would go to heaven? If you say, Gavin, I am not completely sure, this is your moment. The cross is reaching out to you right now. And you know how you know? You're feeling something happening inside of you right now. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I'm going to knock. Will you let me in? Right now, I'm going to count to three. If you want to know Jesus, you're just going to stand in your seat today. You're not going to come up to the front. You're going to stand right where you are. Why do you have to do that? Because the Bible says that if you're ashamed of me on earth, I'll be ashamed of you in heaven. But if you're not ashamed of me right here to declare me, I won't be ashamed of you in front of my Father. It's important that you make a statement of your belief. This is very important. If you want to receive Jesus, every eye is open because you don't have to be embarrassed about anything. It's the greatest choice you'll ever make in your life. One. Come on now. Two. Three. Stand up right now if you want Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right where you're at. Come on. Give him a hand. They're standing up. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you in the back. Come on. Praise you, God. Altar workers are coming to you right now. Altar workers are coming to you right now where you're standing. Stay where you are. They're going to put a hand on your shoulder. They're going to pray with you and also be able to give you something for the next step. But we're all going to pray this prayer together. Come on, give them one more hand. This is amazing. 
You're still free to stand right now. I, 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 there's still a couple. Thank you right there. Don't allow this moment to go by. You're free to stand right now as well. Now listen. They're going to put hands on you. They're just going to agree with you. And then they're going to tell you your next steps in just a moment. But let's all pray this prayer together tonight. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that you are now my king. Forgive me, Jesus, of all my sins. I know that you already know them, but I hand them to you. Thank you, Lord, for taking control from this moment forward. I will be a disciple. I will be a disciple. I will be a disciple. This will not just be one step. I'm going to go the whole way in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give him one more hand. Now, everybody listen right now. This is what's about to happen. The power of God is about to flow. Now, this is how we're going to do this tonight. We are not going to be here for three or four hours, but this is what we are going to do. When you begin to release the stripes of Jesus, because remember, every single one of your sicknesses and diseases were found in one of those stripes. Every pain that you have right now in your body was found in one of those stripes. Many people tonight are going to get healed immediately. Immediately on the spot. But I just want you to know, please remember this. The Bible says God heals eight different ways. Eight different ways. One is immediately. There's another one that always happens all the time. In gradually, it means in percentages. You'll start feeling the pain go away tonight. But then all of a sudden you'll be like, Tomorrow you wake up, man, my back's all better. Whoa. Or a week from now, whoa, I, I, my knee's all straightened up. What's going on? It happens in percentages. Another way that you can get healed that God does is it says as you go. So literally you won't feel anything that happens when we lay hands on you. You'll be like, well, I believed in faith. Okay. And then you'll walk, but you're going to keep believing in faith. And every step you take, you're getting better. I could tell you literally hundreds of these circumstances, right? Over the last 20 years, this is literally all I've seen. There's another one that says he sent his word. He wasn't even with them. So some of y'all, just by hearing the word, by his stripes, I am healed. You're going to take that tonight. You're going to go through the next couple of days, and you're going to be saying it to yourself. Psalm 103 says he sent his word, and he healed them of all their diseases. So Jesus literally was standing in one place. The centurion said, you don't even have to come to my house. And he spoke, and the person was healed from a distance. You could get healed over the telephone. You see this? I've called people so many times for partner calls, just thanking them for giving. And then we end up praying and they're getting healed on the phone. Don't limit God for how he's going to do this. The Bible says, this is really a powerful one, in the book of Proverbs, it says, if you don't use every mean to heal yourself, he said, you're a brother to him who commits suicide. In other words, some of y'all could literally heal yourselves through just changing your diet. Nobody wants to listen to this. But literally, God gave us things here on earth that if we'll just watch ourselves and actually have godly habits, you'll walk yourself right out of sickness. How do I know this? Why? Because 85%, 85% of illnesses are not hereditary. They're because of stress and our diets. Some of y'all just need to get some peace. And when you calm down and God delivers you tonight of anxiety, you're going to sleep again. And when you sleep well, all of a sudden your body's going to start responding. There's so many ways that Jesus heals. But are you ready right now? This is what we're going to do. We're going to ask you if you need healing, you're going to come up to the front. You're going to line up in a single file just real quick. This is going to be quick tonight, but it's going to be powerful. And what's about to happen is as you come up to the front, my wife and I, we're just going to come and lay hands on you. There's also going to be the prayer team that will be following behind us. There's one other way that you need to know that you get healed. Some of these diseases, not every single one, are demonically inspired. This is not every single sickness. But some of them, the reason it's not loosing is because it's not actually just a healing. Jesus had said he went and delivered them, and it said he set them free from their demons. And the moment they were set free, they were also physically healed. So if you need healing right now, I want you to come up to the front. The, the workers are going to be behind us right here. Come up to the front, and I want you to face the crowd. One single file line. Turn around and face the crowd, please. 
Thank you all. They're going to be singing a song in the background, and this is what we're going to do. One single file line. You can go all the way over here to the left, please. Line up all the way on the walls is fine as well. Just make sure they go all the way around. You must be in single file line, and you got to turn and face the crowd. All the way this way as well. All the way this way. Thank you. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to come by. Wife and I are just going to lay hands on you. We're going to get something started. Many of you on the spot, you'll be getting healed. Some of y'all will be feeling something is starting. Something literally is beginning to shift. Something's beginning to happen. You're feeling the pains going away. You're feeling like a heat's going on. All you want to do when that happens is it means God is beginning something new. He's literally beginning to heal you. So what you want to do is you want to stay in faith in that moment. And you want to stay in that. And this is your next step. you got to work it out. Start moving that knee. Start moving that shoulder. You want to put that part of your body that you need healed, you want to put a hand on it. Whether it's your knee, whether it's your heart, whether it's your ears, whatever it is, make sure you put your hand on it right now. Everybody who's extending all the way to this side, make sure it's in a single file line. There could be nobody stacked up double. So please, all ushers, if we could help, just single file all the way around. This is very, very important. We're going to come lay hands on you. We're not going to stay with you for hours tonight. We're just going to lay hands on your head. You're going to agree in faith. Why? Because when faith touches faith, a miracle occurs. When faith touches faith, our faith is going to touch your faith tonight. Remember, the only way you're healed is one of three faiths. Our faith, because you don't got it for yourself tonight. But some of y'all, it will be your faith and it won't even be ours. And then some of y'all, it's somebody else's faith that has been praying for you all the way so that you would be here for this moment and their prayers, God's going to use their faith to get you healed. One of three faiths. Ours, yours, or theirs. Make sure everybody's in a single file line. This is imperative. Now, they're going to be singing a beautiful song. Here's what I want to say. Once you are prayed for, if God's moving on you 100%, let Him do that. But after you get prayed for, if you have kids, you can go get them from Kids World. Everybody else, this is an official dismissal right now. You do not have to stay. It is 8.30. If you need to go get your kids, please go do that. But right now, we're about to pray. Would everybody who wants to stay here put your hands out toward these people right now? And we're going to see some miracles. The moment you get prayed for, please make sure if you have kids in Kids World as well that you go get them. You can bring them back into the sanctuary. Everybody, let's get in the mode. Let's worship Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Put that hand on that part of your body right now. Need just a couple ushers to follow. Here we go. Prayer team as well.
actually just want to share a testimony here. If I could get our cameraman over here just to share a testimony. I'm here with Alina. Everyone say hi to Alina. Alina was just telling us that she had a pain in her left shoulder that she's been dealing with for more than three years, two to three years, she says. She's not even sure how long it's been. It's been a constant pain in her life. But go ahead and move that shoulder around, girl, and tell us what you're feeling right now. I feel lighter. I feel like pain is gone. There was a sharp pain. It's not there anymore. The pain is gone, and her arm feels light. That's awesome. Praise God. Lucy and Will, say hi to Lucy. Lucy was actually, three years ago, she had COVID and got pneumonia. Her lungs were damaged. The doctor said permanently. She had fibrosis in her lungs, and she had not been able to breathe without coughing. Every time she took a deep breath, she would, deep breath, she would cough. And right now, she's saying, I can breathe normally. I can breathe without any coughing. A miracle has taken place in her lungs right now. So give it up for what Jesus did in Lucy's life. How you feeling? Great. I feel great, and you know what? I never, never believe what they said. I always believe in my God because I know who I serve, and I know my position, and I know what He can do. Hallelujah! Amen. Awesome, awesome. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Oh, 
so worthy, God. team will want everyone to go and we're just going to begin to lay hands everyone that's in line right now just begin to pray and lift your hands someone from the altar team is going to begin to lay hands on you and anoint you and know the anointing is here the faith is here for healing so if you're in the line right now just begin to lift your hands and receive and someone on the altar team just everyone on the altar team just begin to go down the line and pray just go down the line and pray thank you Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our
Church, if you still have kids in Kids World, please go pick them up. If you have kids in Kids World, please go now to pick up your kids. Thank you so much. We love you. We're going to continue the cross series on Sunday. We'll see you Sunday. We love you, church. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. Come on, somebody.